In this video, I'm going to be talking about the basics of what a compressor does and a good way to use compression in your live mix. I'm using software today to visualize what's going on, but these principles can carry over to your live console. I'm gonna be using a kick drum file here to show how to use um, a compressor on the kick drum, and the main principles of this can apply to you know, any instrument that you're using. Um, so this is what a kick drum looks like on a software. And these pieces right here are called waveforms. Um, what we can do is we can zoom in. And this is a single kick hit happening. And this spike right here is called the transient. So I'm gonna zoom back out um, and play this and we'll hear what it sounds like without any uh, compression happening. Okay, so that's just the raw kick sound. So now I'll bring up the compressor that I'm gonna use right here and this compressor is inserted onto this channel. Basically, when you think of compression, think of squeezing. So when a waveform is being compressed, it's being squeezed and the waveform gets smaller. So think of if you were holding a foam stress ball and you're squeezing it, you're compressing it. So your hand is kind of the compressor that's compressing that, that uh, stress ball. And it's the same same principle here when you're compressing the waveforms. And I'm gonna go through five main parameters on a compressor that you can mess with. And these parameters I'm talking about, um, you know, I'm using a software, but these parameters are the same on an X32 console or M32 or Yamaha or Soundcraft or whatever console you have, um, these parameters should look exactly the same. Um, so the first thing I'm going to look at is the threshold right here. And the threshold says that the waveform needs to be a certain level of volume before the compressor turns on. So it's kind of like, you know, you have to be this tall to ride. Um, and you can turn that up and down. So you're setting, setting the volume point that, um, the waveform must hit before it's going to start that squeezing. So if we play this kick right here, you can see that this is showing you the volume level that the kick is at right now. And the threshold is up here, so there's no compression happening at all. So if we lower this level, now the kick is going past the threshold level, so now it's starting to compress, it's starting to squeeze. And this GR right here stands for gain reduction. So it's basically just showing you um, how much compression is happening, how much squeezing of the waveform is happening. And if you turn it back up, no, no compression happening, it's not reaching that threshold level. So I'm going to mute the audio for a bit because um, I just want to show visually what's going on and um, we don't have to hear that kick continuously happening in the background. Now this compressor has another view. Um, it's kind of cool that it, you can see what's happening. So I'm going to play this kick and these spikes right here are the, the volume, the volume spikes of the, the kick happening. And this blue line right here um, represents that threshold again. Um, and so we can lower this line. And this dark gray right here represents where the, the kick volume was at. And we lower the threshold. And now this shows you what it's being squeezed down to, what the compressor is doing. The volume level is hitting this threshold, going over the threshold, and the ratio tells you how much compression you want to happen, how much squeezing you want to happen. And it's measured in uh, 
go all the way down. It's one to one, and then it goes up to two to one, three to one, um, four to one. It goes all the way to kind of infinity to one. And there's a mathematical explanation for why this is measured in ratios, but all you really do need to know that is that the higher that this number goes, the more squeezing that is happening. So if you start at one to one, there's, there's not going to be any, any squeezing happening, so there's no difference here. Um, if you see, this is where the original volume is. That's still where it is. There's no squeezing happening because the ratio is at 1 to 1. So let's get it the ratio higher and higher. As you can see, more squeezing happening. This, this is being squeezed down more and more. You can put it all the way here. And that's, that's what's happening with the compressor right now. So in a live setting, you should stay between, most of the time you should stay between uh, two to one and five to one on your ratio. Um, that's because you don't, don't want a ton of manipulation happening um, in a live setting. So all of my compressors are usually around you know, two to one or five to one, unless I'm doing some kind of, you know, parallel compression or bus compression or something like that. But, but the compressors on the channels should generally just be around from two to one to five to one is kind of where you're going to set that. Now we're going to move on to the attack and release. So we set the threshold, we set how much squeezing we want to happen, and now we can control when we want to start the compression and when we want to release the compression, and that's your attack and release. The attack is how much time is going to pass before the compressor starts squeezing. Um, if, you, if you start all the way here, it's going to clamp down as soon as that volume hits this threshold right here. Um, and as you turn it up, it's getting slower and slower. Um, so here it's, uh, we turn it immediately. So as soon as this volume hits that threshold, it's going to start compressing. And as you turn it up higher and higher, it's going to wait a little while after um, this volume hits a threshold before it's going to start compressing. And so now if you turn this all the way up, you'll see that there's no compression happening because um, the attack is too long. It's waiting too late to start compressing after a volume hits a threshold, and so it's missing the waveforms completely. So at that point, the attack is, is too slow to hit these volume uh, spikes. So on the other side, the release is how much time goes by before we release the compressor. So it's like how much time the compressor is on. And this is, this is better seen in the other view, so I'm going to switch over to here. So if we have you know, our attack set kind of quickly, um, and this is the squeezing happening. So this will show you how long this compressor is going to be on. Um, so if you set this super quick, it's going to turn on, turn off super quick. Now we're going to lengthen our release time. So the compressor is happening for a longer period of time. You can go all the way up and now that, that kind of means the compressor is always on. It's always reducing that volume. Um, and you don't, in this case, you don't want to put the, you know, the release too long, um, cause then you're, you're just, um, you can't really hear a difference at that point because it's just always compressing at the same amount. Um, so you set it kind of like this. So now we have our threshold, our ratio, our attack release. And the last thing that you set is your output gain or most consoles call it uh, makeup gain and so th since we're compressing it um, you know this is the volume coming in and then we're compressing and this is the volume coming out the volume is a lot lower now the overall volume is lower than from the beginning and so what we can do is we can raise that compressed volume now that you know the waveform is being compressed we can raise that volume to match 
um, the volume that it was coming in in the first place so that um, you're doing more of the squeezing, but you're still maintaining um, that overall volume level. So now that we know what all of these parameters are doing, I'm going to turn the, the sound back on and I'm going to show you how I would compress this kick drum and what sound I'm going for. So when I use a compressor on a live kick, I want it to sound punchier. So what I'm going to do is I'll zoom into this wave file. What I want to happen is I'm going to set the attack slower so that it's going to, the compressor is going to miss this first transient and then it's going to clamp on to the stuff that's happening right after the transient and that should get a, um, a punchier sound out of that. So let's uh, turn, turn the kick back on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reset these uh, things back to what they were before. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to set the ratio. Um, I like to put the kick drum on 4 to 1, and that's just from messing around with things. I know that I like um, the amount of squeezing that's happening at 4 to 1. So now that I've set that, I'm going to work on this threshold. I'm going to lower it. Now this is what it sounds like if you, you have it you know, all the way. It's kind of like a, a, a definitely a pumping sound, a pulsing sound. Um, and I don't want a ton of manipulation happening, so I'm only going to do it a little bit. And one thing that's good that you can do is um, constantly you know turn it on and off a be it and and be like am I making the sound better or am I making the sound worse because it's easy to get caught up in what you're doing and then you don't realize that you're kind of you know killing the dynamics of of whatever you're compressing um, and that's not a good thing so um, you know turn it on and off and see okay am I if I am I going in the right direction or do I need to back up and um, undo some of the things that I'm doing Okay, so now I'm gonna mess with the attack. And the attack is a little too fast right now. It, it's, um, it's clamping down on uh, the transient. So I'm just gonna sweep it until, until I uh, just hear what I'm, what I'm looking for. If I were to uh, take the attack super quick, this is what it, what it is. Um, and I'm gonna just make it slower and slower until I hear enough of the transient, but then I hear it clamping down on the stuff afterwards. So, see, so yeah, at this point, it, it's not clamping down on any of that either. So... I think I like it right there. So that's um, 28 milliseconds um, of time before it starts squeezing. So it's, it's missing this initial transient and it's uh, clamping down. And so now, now I'm gonna uh, lower the threshold actually a little bit more. Um, that's too much. Um, Now I'll A-B that. And I need to work with my release. So what I want to do is I want that clamping to happen um, for the length of this waveform, but I want it to stop before it um, gets to the next kick hit.
so I think you'll like it. I like the least the release time to be right there. So then again, I'm gonna turn this off. Turn this back on. And uh, I forgot that we had uh, uh, messed with this output gain, so. So if you can hear this right now, I feel like the kick is, with the compressor off, the kick is kind of sounding flubby. And now with it on, I just think it's a, it's a little bit tighter. I like how it's how it's standing sounding right there and then again you know I'm doing a lot of tweaking so turning it on and off and saying you know is this better is this worse do I need to back off the threshold or you know make the attack slower um, the release quicker something like that is something you can um, you know mess with as you're you know listening more and more and so this isn't um, so much controlling the, the overall dynamics of this kick drum. Um, if you were to have a drummer that was kind of inconsistent with um, how loud he's hitting the drum and you want it to be more of a consistent kick sound, you can definitely uh, make this attack quicker so that you, um, so it is, you know, hitting these dynamics and then raise the output gain higher so that um, these transients kind of all are more on the same level. Um, that's, you know, another way to use the compressor. And that's more um, what you do with vocals, too. Um, you don't want vocals to sing loud. All of a sudden, it kind of is a piercing loud -ness. You you kind of bring those peaks down with the compressor, squeeze them, and then um, bring the overall gain up. So the volume level of a vocal is more consistent. Um, so that's the basics of what a compressor does.